So this is going to be the big equation. It's going to be our force equals our stiffness matrix K global times our nodal displacement. So we know that this is going to be zero, right? Zero, 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 zero. So we only have, remember, U3 X and U3 Y because everything else was a fixed support. So just like the one dimensional, that means we can cross out everything and all of um, the corresponding components, right? Cross those out, cross it out, cross it out, cross it out, cross it out, and so forth. So basically we're only left now with a two by two matrix, right? So after crossing everything out, we can look at everything only in at the third node, right? So F3X, F3Y is gonna equal our global stiffness matrix at U3X and U3Y. And that is gonna be times U3X, U3Y. Now, so now this is the actual matrix. This is the displacement matrix. This is just the slots that I'm illustrating. Now, how do we fill this matrix up. So we need to find the global stiffness matrix just at node three, okay? In order to do that, big K equals A E. Now U three X U three. Okay, so now remember like in the one D problem, we were adding every component that has a three X and a three Y. So you literally do the exact same thing. You try, you look at your local stiffness matrix and you match up everything that has a U3X and you add them into this component here. So let's look at our global stiff, our local stiffness matrices. So we've already done this. We've looked at our U3X column and we found our U3X row. That equals 0.6 squared. Okay, so go back down here. 0.6 squared is 0.36, so let's go. 0.36 plus. We look around. Okay, we got a 3x here, 3x here. Oh, but a zero. Okay, so we'll leave that one alone. And now over here we had another point. We had another 3x column and another 3x row. Okay, so it's 0.36 again. So plus 0.36, and that's our first component of our 4x4, four four, or sorry, our 2x2 two two matrix. Now we need to do the same thing with our Ys. Look at U3Y and U3X, so match those up. Okay, so we got U3Y, U3X here and here, and this gives us, just gives us a zero, so we're gonna leave that one alone. Okay, so 3X, okay, so we got our U3Y here and our U3X, so negative 0.48. So we'll go down here, negative 0.48. And now we can find anything else. So we have negative 0.48 for U3X, or U3Y, U3X. Okay, so now we're looking at this matrix and we've got our 3Y column and again our 3X column. So we're gonna get 0.8 times 0.6, which is positive 0.48 plus 0.48. It's now 3x and 3y. 3x, 3y, another zero in this one. Looking at stiffness matrix number two, we have our 3x again and our 3y. And it should be this one here, which is negative 0.48. So we'll have to shove that in negative 0.48 and now our first stiffness matrix 3x 3y it's going to be positive 0.48 because it's reflection of 0.8 times 0.6 because it's a symmetric matrix so plus 0.48 now the last one is this component. So we need to find everything that has a 3y and a 3y. So looking at our stiffness matrix 3, u3y, u3y we have a 1. Okay, so add 1. 
one plus looking at the matrix two, three y, three y point six four. And stiffness matrix one, local stiffness matrix one, three y, three y, we have point eight squared. So point eight squared is point six four. Okay, so now we had an L. Remember, if on the local stiffness matrix one, two, and three, we had a different L, right? It was 50, 50, and then 20. So we can't forget that L. It's gonna be different L's for each stiffness matrix, right? So every time we had a component taken from stiffness matrix number three, we had to divide it by 20. And one, was the only component that we took from stiffness matrix three. So that was the only component that we divided by 20. And the rest get divided by 50 because everything from stiffness matrix one and two are both 50 meters. So over 50 for every other component. And we know that this is zero, right? That equals zero. So evaluating these This gives us our stiffness matrix, our global stiffness matrix, K, at our third node. So if you do this uh, addition, this is what we get. Okay, so this is the global stiffness at node three. So basically, I didn't cancel out the entire matrix. I've just chosen to only evaluate the properties at the node three because we remember um, from the matrix multiplication properties if we have a zero uh, column or zero row any multiplication in that row is going to be zero so this allows us this property just like what we did before with the 1d matrix or the 1d system um, allows us to cancel or out, out, cross out those rows and not have to do any um, evaluating so now we've got the global stiffness matrix for node three so now what do we want to do? We want to, we want to evaluate the uh, displacements at node three now, right? That was the main objective of this problem. That's what we want to do. So same thing as uh, one dimensional, recall that the force equals K times U. So we have our F three X, F three Y. Now remember to be careful when you're labeling your forces here, because we're looking at stiffness matrix, global stiffness matrix for three, right? So make sure you have your 3x and your 3y. So putting in our global stiffness matrix at node 3, this is what we get. And remember, 8e is constant, so I'm leaving those out for now. And now we're multiplying by u 3x and u 3y. And looking back at our original problem, in the picture we've shown that we have a 50 kilonewton applied force in the x direction and a negative 100 kilonewton applied force in the y direction. So Let's plug this into our, our equation, 50, 100. And now you can see how easy this is, right? It's literally the exact same thing as the one dimensional problem now. We simplified it and made it super easy. And now we just need to do matrix multiplication and solve for our displacement, displacement uh, equation. So, Matrix multiplication, we can show that 50 50,000 newtons. Remember, area was 50 times 10 to the minus 4 meters squared. Modulus of elasticity, 200 times 10 to the 9 newtons per meter squared. And now, if we do the matrix multiplication, we have 0.0144 times U3x plus 0. Right, so that is basically it. This gives us our U3 equal to 0.0035 meters. Similarly with um, second force, so this was U3x. And now this gives us U3y equal to minus 0 0.00132 meters. So we've now solved for the nodal displacements at node number three. Um, using 
our global stiffness matrix for a two-dimensional problem. Um, and I'll make a separate video where I solve for the internal forces for the same system um, using the same approach uh, with all the same values. But uh, for now, this is all we needed to do. We needed to solve for the nodal displacements at node number three. Our U3 done and our our U3X and our U3Y was done. So let's just recap. So basically the first step, first thing you want to do is write this out every time. You're probably going to be given this, but you have your local stiffness matrix, your general form um, with all of your cosines. And what you want to do first, you want to find your stiffness matrices, your local stiffness matrices for every member. Every member is going to have a different st local stiffness matrix. So you look at your first node where you're going to consider first. I considered node 1 um, and it, it might be different, for, it depends on the way that you label things but for member 1 that entails our node 1 to node 3, okay? So when you're labeling your stiffness matrix, your local stiffness matrix, make sure that you only have 1x, 1y, 3x, and 3y because you're standing at node number 1 looking at node number 3. So that is important to keep, uh, to keep straight. You can only have the nodes that are connecting your member within your local stiffness matrix. All right, so we had our angle of 53 degrees. We calculated our cos of that angle, our sine of that angle, plugged it into our big formula, our big matrix with all of our cosine and sine angles, and we got our local stiffness matrix for our first member. Did the exact same thing with the second member. We are standing at node number two, looking at node number Three, so we have our twos and threes in our local stiffness matrix, and we had an angle of 127 degrees. Remember, we're always measuring from the x-axis, right? Always measuring from the x-axis counterclockwise of the node that we're standing at. Similarly, we did the exact same thing with member number three. Standing at node number three, looking at node number four, our angle was 90 degrees, and we got this local stiffness matrix simple and then we did our boundary conditions right so we found that the only nodal displacements were going to be at node number three because everything else had a hinge or it was a pin support or a fixed support so there can't be any movement and then if we were to assemble the global stiffness matrix we had to do a lot of running around which I didn't really want to do because you don't really need to to solve this problem but remember that we have to solve we have to find out each component the matching components for every column and every row with our local stiffness matrix and add them up. If we have anything overlapping, add them up, throw them in your global stiffness matrix. So then we're looking at the global stiffness matrix, F equals K global times U global. We had no movement anywhere except for at node number three. So we were able to just, for now, temporarily eliminate all of those rows and columns out, which left us with a two by two, two by two matrix globally for node number three. Now to populate that matrix, what we did, we found all of the matching X and Y components for our local stiffness matrix, and whenever there was anything overlapping, we added them up, and this gave us the global stiffness matrix at node number three, right? And then throwing it back into our equation, F equals KD, or sorry, F equals K times U, our stiffness matrix, we then used multiplication and solve for the only unknowns, which were our displacements at uh, node number three. So we got our 3x of 0.0035 meters and 3y of negative 0.00132 meters. So in my next video I'm going to look at solving for the reaction forces or sorry not the reaction forces the uh, the internal member forces in each three of our members so make sure you check that out. Um, if you like my channel, if you like my content, subscribe, like and share and visit my website that I'll link at the bottom here. Thanks for watching.